a lot of my work is done inside of Markdown, and a lot of the times that work entails reading other people's documents that come to me in a Markdown form. And as everybody knows, I like to do most of my work inside of the terminal. I usually use Vim. I've been using Nano recently. I don't want to talk about it. The point is, is that I do most of my reading of these Markdown files inside of a terminal. The biggest problem with terminals when it comes to Markdown is that terminals do not support multi-sized fonts. Now, what, I, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that you have a font size inside of a terminal. Say you have set your font size to 15. You can't have a heading inside of a Markdown file be a bigger size like it normally would inside of you know, a browser or whatever, right? It's just not possible. Terminals do not support multi-size fonts. Now, obviously, the solution to this is just to use a viewer that supports that, you know, a GUI viewer or whatever. But I like to do my work in the terminal because it proves that I'm a nerd. So when I found a application called Frogmouth, I was pretty excited because it has a very neat way of getting around the fact that you can't have multi-sized fonts. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Frogmouth is a markdown viewer for the terminal and it does some really cool things. So let's go ahead and jump in. So first, this is the GitHub page for Frogmouth. It has all of that you need to know about this application. And we're going to take a look at it first. But first, let's install this thing. So we're going to go to, to the terminal. The best way to install this is with pip. I installed the AUR version and it would not run. So I don't know if it's old or if it doesn't install all the dependencies or what. But I, I was just going to install this with pipx. So at pipx install Frogmouth like so. And then... We're going to need a markdown file to actually look at. So I'm going to go into notes, season seven. This is where we have all of our, oops, all of our notes for our podcast. And then what we're, I'm going to do is, is instead of going to nano to view this. So if I look, actually, let me show you what this file looks like inside of nano. This is what the markdown looks like inside of nano. It has some syntax highlighting. So you can kind of tell like this is a heading. Uh, this is a horizontal line. This is a link. It looks... Fine, and that's usually the way Nano looks when it comes to Markdown files, right? It's not that special, but it's not that bad. As long as you've enabled syntax highlighting, you can kind of see what things are supposed to be, right? But if all you're sp want to, wanting to do is read this and you're not wanting to edit it, there's no reason to use Na Nano when you have Frogmouth installed. So I'll, I'll use Frogmouth and then the name of the file. And this is what that document looks like inside of Frogmouth. Now, like I said, you can't edit it from inside of Frogmouth. So if you're wanting to edit something, you're going to just have to hop into a text editor. That's not what Frogmouth is supposed to do at all. Instead, it's just for viewing. And the large it handles large documents very, very well. It handles links very, very well. So if you wanted to click on this, you could click on it. If you wanted to, you, you, you can use your mouse. If you wanted to use your mouse to scroll up and down, or you could use the Vim keys, if you're a Vim nut like I am, you can use the Vim keys in order to go up and down. You can use the arrow keys to go up and down. It's really quite cool. And as you can see, right smack dab in your face is that they have found a really neat way of handling the fact that terminals can't handle multi-size text. This right here is a heading. So the text size is the same between here and here. But what they've done is they've highlighted it to show that that part is a heading. Now, now, from what I've seen, they don't do a good job of differentiating the type of heading. So this is a heading one. This is a heading four. And they look exactly the same. It'd be cool if the headings were a different color. So you could kind of differentiate types of heading or strength of heading. So H1s or h three should be different colors or something like that. Because that's the only way you'd be able to tell the difference between them. But just the fact that they've managed to make it look like a heading is really cool. And it makes things stand out just like you'd want to do if you're using a heading in in markdown when you use a heading obviously you want that to you want it to be look like a title or some kind of delineator between the other types of text and they've done a good job here of doing that that's really cool now outside of the part that i'm nerdily fascinated by it does a good job of just being a good viewer of markdown files so there's not much to it it's literally meant for one single purpose it does have a help section so if you hit f1 you can get the help and most of the help just deals with the navigation of the application itself with key bindings and 
navigation between different parts of the UI because there are more parts to the UI than just the viewer, which I'll show you here in a minute. You can set bookmarks, you can browse through your file system inside of Frogmouth so you don't have to exit it to go to different files, which is nice. You can show the history and it has table of contents support. So if you use your headings, like you probably will if you're used to using Markdown, it will show you the table of contents, which I'll, I'll again show you here in just a second. It goes on to show more key bindings, and then it goes on to show com some commands that you can use inside of the address bar, which I'll again show you here in just a second. One of the coolest things that it can do is that it will allow you to view readmes from GitHub, GitLab, Codeberg, and I think Bitbucket as well. So you can use their address bar up here at the top to view markdown files, which is basically what re readmes are, directly from, fro from Frogmouth without having to enter the whole URL. You can just basically put the owner slash repo and it will bring you that particular readme of whatever that repository is. So that's really cool. So if I hit control N here, it'll bring up the sidebar. Now the sidebar will show you the table of contents by default. And then if you want to switch between those, you press tab until the part you want to move around in is highlighted and then you can use the arrow keys. So here is the file manager so you can navigate between your different files. So if I wanted to go to a different one here, I could go to notes, uh, season seven, and then uh, actually go to completed episodes. We'll go to, uh, it doesn't matter, we'll just go there. And I've opened up a different markdown file now. And if I wanted to go back to that I could just hit tab again and continue navigating through the file tree. If you've set bookmarks in a particular file, they'll be displayed here. And the history of all of your markdown files are, is here as well. And you can then navigate between those two. If I wanted to go back to 715, I could do that. And it just keeps showing me the history. That is a great way of going back between two different files if you're trying to reference those two files. That's pretty neat. One of the things that I like most about Frogmouth is that it's just so simple. There's not anything extraneous here that you don't need, okay? It just views markdown files and it does it really well inside of the terminal. And if that's something that you need to do, you're not gonna find a better tool than this. So let's say we wanted to view a readme from a GitHub page. How would we go about doing that? Well, we can clear out all of this and then just type in the username of the GitHub profile and then the repository. So I have one copied here. This is just the Frogmouth readme, but I believe I have to do, actually that might just work. Nope. That didn't work. I'm, maybe you have to do GitHub like this. Yeah, there we go. And then let me close out the navigation, which I do with Control N. And as you can see, this is the readme for Frogmouth directly inside of Frogmouth. And all I've done is copied this last, the last part of the URL from GitHub. So I, this part here and this part here. So if you happen to know those two things, this is where it's really useful. Obviously, if you have to go to the URL to actually get those two things, you might as well just read it inside the browser. But if you happen to know the username and the name of the repository, so if I wanted to do mine, so let's go up here again, delete this. I think actually if I hit, there we go. So if I do the, so if I do GL, which is GitLab, the Linux cast slash my dash dots, I think think that will work is what it's called. Yeah, there we go. This is the readme file for my dot files on GitLab. And obviously I knew what that part of the URL is for my personal repository. So it was easy to do. So if you know that kind of information and you want to view readmes from GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Codeberg inside of Frogmouth, that's pretty cool as well. And it's very, very easy. So there's really not much more to say about this. If I mean, I <laughs> I know I seem pretty excited about a Markdown editor or a Markdown reader, I should say. And I kind of am because I spend so much of my time reading Markdown files. And most of the time, I don't need to edit them. Like I do a lot of, most of my job now is editing files. So Frogmouth wouldn't be very useful for that aspect. But I do spend an awful lot of time editing the final edits once they come back to me. And I don't usually need to be in an editor to do that. Being able to see somewhat what the final version is going to look like once it's published to the web even though the text you know the sizes still aren't quite there is actually fairly useful and i've found frogmouth to be just one of those things that i'm going to continue to use 
now that I've found it. It's really, really nice. So I'll leave links to Frogmouth down in the, the video description. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge is not anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys just seriously, thank you so much for your support. Thanks everybody. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah, flood that a little bit. Not surprising.